Hi everybody, my name is Eli. My name is Jason. I'm Caden. And I'm Jaden. And, and we're the Yahoo and the Tori YouTube channel. Ah, we're going to get it together. Nicole's mouth is full over there, so she can't say hi, but I will say hi for her. And um, we hope that you guys are doing well. We hope you guys are blessed. We thank you guys very, very much for spending some time here. It is a third day or fourth day? Fourth day, yeah. Fourth day. Yeah. fourth day. Fourth day on our creator's calendar. And so we are busily jumping through this week and getting through it. And we hope that you guys are good. We hope you guys are blessed. Much love to everybody out there. If you guys have any kind of prayer requests or things that you would like us to mention in our prayers, if you would please leave them in the comments. Um, if you could put a direction for the need that we need to pray, we are happy to pray for those who are out there. And we extend our little table here to everybody out there, and we thank you guys very, very, very much. Now, before we get going, I want to kind of go over the same kind of stuff that we've been going prior to this. And this one, I don't want to get too long on this. Um, and so what I'm going to do first is this one was, um, I thought Fear Monger did a really good job. This is our homeboy, Barkley. Barkley, what's up, buddy? Um, so this is what he said. This is, and this is, we've had a conversation over the last few days um, where we had a brother who was wanting us to essentially denounce or call out those who are into polygamy. And I cannot find a command that says thou shalt not, um, you know, take more than one wife. There's no, there's no such command. And so I thought this was very interesting that he did. Polygamy was actually the norm in Israel society, in as much so that it wasn't an issue to even document it. Gideon had 70 sons. You don't get that from one wife. Simeon had more than one wife, not to mention the concubines and the handmaids the men of Israel possessed. Israel breeded and multiplied prolifically, and that was mainly due to polygamy, which is why the Egyptians feared them. Yah also regulated polygamy in the Torah. He personally gave David his multiple wives. It's commanded that kings not have many wives, but if you look at the context, many would mean an exorbitant amount, whatever that may be, but definitely wasn't more than one. Uh, because the same term was applied to gold and horses. Polygamy is normal. The only reason why we don't think it is is because we've grown up in a material, uh, matriarchal, I don't know how to say that word, society, and because our own biases and indoctrination. And that is ex absolutely exactly correct. And so this, this goes back to when I was discussing women shaving their legs. And I it wasn't until the 1900s that they, they even did anything of the sort. And so every woman that's out there, uh, it's their norm because as a child, their mothers or somebody had them shave their legs, right? It's, it's doctrines of men, right? We grow up and we become whatever it is that we've been indoctrinated with. And yeah, absolutely. We are indoctrinated to think that a marriage is a, a single man and a single wife. Now, first and foremost, I am not like saying everybody should go get a second wife. In fact, I don't think that would work in 99.9% .9 of the worlds out there. And like my wife and I were discussing, if, if we were married for 25 years and you decide you're going to go get a new wife, that is probably not going to go over well. This was for a time and it was for a place and there are no laws against it. And so um, I'm not advocating that everybody should go become a, a house wrecker because unless you are, you know, unless you're out in the middle of a jungle or middle of somewhere and you are out building your own little, um, your, 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 your family, if you're trying to mass build your family, you're not going to mass build your family with, when you have a wife with, with single kids, you know, you, you, some wives, you know, in the, in the, um, like Rachel and Leah, it, here's the gig, you know, they, you may say that it was, um, oh, it's just a one off. But, you know, Jacob would have broken Torah by taking his second wife and Rachel was barren. So if you were looking for the 12 tribes of Yisrael, you're looking for the 12 sons, you wouldn't have had 12 tribes of Yisrael for a very long time. Uh, Rachel died before she, I mean, she only had two kids, right? She died, I think, while giving birth to Benjamin. So you would have had, uh, you would have had, what, Ooh. how many of the four, four did she have with uh, Leah? Did he have with Leah? Six I kids? Was, yeah, I think it was... The dino is one of them as well. Yeah, so you would have six tribes of Yisrael instead of 12 tribes of Yisrael. So if you're looking and thinking that our father doesn't have his plan and doesn't know what he's doing, he absolutely did. And again, that's these are just really good things we should all discuss and it should be out in the open. There, You know, there's no such thing as hidden polygamy. If, if it's hidden polygamy, you're, you're committing adultery and you're a homewrecker. And it's... it's 
I don't know how you would actually have that conversation where you decided you need another wife, but you would know the situation and it would make sense because everybody would be in agreement with it, right? Your wife that you have would be going, yes, we need to build up. We're going to get wiped off the civilization. The bloodline is going to die. Let's have more kids. Let's, let's build a bigger family. And so that, that is um, very interesting stuff. Now, the second thing I want to get into here um, is with Julie. So Julie writes this, uh, Dear Sis Julie, and we, we appreciate Dear Sis Julie, and we thank you. She goes, No more sin or death in the new kingdom of Yah. So I would think no killing either. One man, one woman is exampled in the original garden, commandment seven, not to commit adultery. Would you be breaking that with multiple wives? Okay, so there's the very first question on that. Would you, Commandment seven is not to commit adultery. Would you be breaking that with multiple wives? Gentlemen. No, because it would be an agreement thing. It would be a full-on, like, thing. And where there it would was be a so ketubah. many, It would be a marriage, yeah, right? It would be a full-on thing, like, where the original, we had the, the original Adam and Eve. The two is because they were, it was supposed, that's how it was supposed to be before they ate the apple and everything turned into chaos where you were fighting for your life every single day in the wilderness. Yeah, and so if you're married to a woman, you are not committing adultery. If you are married to two women and it is all in agreement, you are not committing adultery. Adultery is sex outside of marriage and you are that is that is what adultery is so so no i i don't think that would be committing adultery and i know here's here's the rub and, and you guys please don't think that i'm um callous or that i'm heartless or anything of the sort i understand what everybody's saying and we have all traveled these roads and we've traveled this and there's nothing more important than a single man and a single woman to establish a family when we break that, we break the family, right? If your parents or if you're, 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 you'll never have a happy house if you have the family that your parents are fighting all the time. It, it goes, it, it destroys a house. It doesn't matter how it is. And um, yeah, so you, you would, it, it's important that we understand what adultery is. And that, that, is a, that, is a, that is not adultery if you are faithfully committing to them. And a lot of people have it like funky, right? They, they're like, oh, well, this is just weird. Two women, one guy. It's not like that, right? They're separate houses. It's almost like a separate family, but they're all for the good of, the, of uh, enabling you to continue on, right? This isn't a kinky, funky thing. This is about building large families. And back in the days, there was no problem with this, right? And like Fearmonger was saying, um, you know, it's, uh, it's, it's what it was in, in the, the community, the, the way it was. Okay. All right. Uh, Eli, what are you doing here? I'm trying to get Mickey out of the Okay. Chair. So Come disturbing on. my speech here. All right. I would also like to think, this is our next thing. I would also like to think the father knows the heart of loyalty and commitment. He would ultimately be supportive of that. And again, I don't want people to think that I'm callous or cold or anything of the sort. I am not advocating that a man, I mean, if a man cheats on his wife, this guy's a beta male right? He's a beta male. If a wife cheats on her husband, she's a bad woman, right? It's a, it's a bad husband and a bad woman. That's the way it is. You are, you're beat, you're bad. I mean, you, you broke, that's where you're breaking loyalty. We're not talking about this. And the guy goes out and cheats on you and says, he's, he's going to marry another wife or something of the sort. That's not what this is about. It's all in an agreement thing. And everybody has to be in agreement, right? If your wife, you decide you're going to get another wife, and your wife isn't down with it, and all of a sudden it becomes a huge contention, destroys what house you have. Wrong move, right? And so that's not so. Anyway, these are different times. I just want to get this out in the open. All right. So yeah, Yah knows our hearts, and unfortunately, our hearts are wicked and evil, and in, in all of that. So um, also, this is the next question: Would the cleaving to your wife, leaving father and mother, not be like a command? Like the command to be fruitful and multiply. We have that command. Yeah, we actually have that. It's command seven, right? Yeah. Command and men and women should um, build their own families. And absolutely. And so it is a command. There are commands to be fruitful and to multiply. And yes, and you can see though, um, at the end when um, Jacob and Rachel, Rachel and Leah were at odds with each other. And Leah and, in fact, it says Jacob didn't love Leah like he loved Rachel. But 
at the end, Rachel died and Leia became the primary woman and he she was loved. And so it, it took her her entire lifetime to get to where her husband loved her like that. But it happened. It did happen. And Yah had his way. And, and, you know, this family, if you look at this family, this family's a little jacked up, right? The, the, all of them. I mean, one of, one of these guys tosses people down wells and things of that nature. I mean, it's just, it's a, it's a jacked up family. And so there's a lot of issues with this. So again, I'm not advocating. She says comments and kindness and respect, blessings. And uh, yeah, m much love to you out there. And that leads me to the final um, piece right here. And this is from a, another gal. And before we go into that, yet again, I want to I want to look up what the definition of guard is. the The definition of guard, G U A R D, is it, anyone want to take a stab at this? Um, anyone other than Eli who's staring at my screen? Like to guess what it means. What does guard mean? Uh, What's the definition of guard? Um, to keep, to protect. To keep, to protect. Yeah, that's good. Anything else, Jade? Um, I think I pretty much covered what I was going to say. All right, it's a verb. It's watch over in order to protect or control. Okay, did you have something? No, no, no. Okay. Um, also, it's to protect against damage or harm. So if we are called to guard a command or we guard something, what does that mean for us? Um, we protect the law. To watch over it and to do it. Yeah, and you, we got to watch over and protect it if we're to guard it. Now, if we go in, I want to go into the Sephir real quick. And if I go into the search feature and I search for the word guard... You guys aren't going to believe how many times this sucker's in here. It's in here a lot. So it's, it's I'm not even going to do a count on it. It's so many times it's, it's that. But it, here it is. It's like, you know, Yah sent us into the garden. He says we need to guard the garden, right? And we didn't guard the garden. Then he says guard the way to the tree of life. We didn't guard that. And then Cain goes, am I to guard my brother? Right? And then here's here's what Yah says in, in this Genesis 17, 9. You shall guard my covenant. And it goes on and on. This is my covenant, which you shall guard. They shall guard it, right? Over and over and over. So I'm just going to pull this up that if it was not a big deal to guard it, and what I would like to ask you guys is how is tossing the laws of God, if the laws of God no longer apply to us, how are we protecting the laws of God? We're not. We're not even following them. We're having nothing to do with them. Yeah, it's just over and over and over. I'm not, I'm into Leviticus. I'm on three pages right now. Guard, guard. You shall it's guard like, my Shabbats. Guard my commandments. Guard that which I've told you. Guard the instructions. Guard the watch of the sanctuary. Guard. I mean, it's over and over and over. May guard. May Yah guard you. Right. Um, it doesn't. It doesn't end. I mean, we're. I'm only in Deuteronomy. I'm on four or five pages of this. You shall guard my commandments. Uh, guard the statutes. Uh, it, it's just the same thing over and over. We're continuing on, right? So we got into Deuteronomy. We got Jubilees. You guard my Shabbats. Guard my Shabbats. Guard my Shabbat. Guard my Shabbat. Over and over and over in Jubilees. Guard my Shabbat. What What are we supposed to do? Oh, we're supposed to guard Yah's Shabbat. We're supposed to guard his ways. Guard what he does. We're supposed to love this. We're supposed to defend this with our life, right? With every last bit that we have. There is an Enoch, right? Guard the elect. Guard the foundation of the earth. Guard those. Guard the men. Guard this. Um... Guard your purity and conduct, right? It's it's over and over. Um, here, let me get to the end of this. There you go. That's that's what I got to the end of it. I don't know what this. What is this at here? This was in Jasher. Yeah, tons and tons of stuff in Jasher. So I want to get to the last gal, and I want to get us going here. But this is uh, another gal, and this is again the power of Yah because he sends unlimited people to our channel. And what we have to do as people is we have to be kind, we have to be patient, we have to be humble, and we just have to get the message out. And so this is where I'd like to read a little bit from this gal, um, Sister Tam Tamara uh, Canham. She goes, Christ was the ultimate sacrifice. Why would sacrificial rituals be reinstated when Christ died for our sins? Sacrificial rituals became the inoperative when Christ died. Okay, boys, true or false? True that Christ became our sacrifice. That Absolutely. Is correct. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes. That was no trick question there. Okay. So I, I told her, and this was going on the part. So I told everybody yesterday, and this is where I think she was she was coming off. I said, when the kingdom comes, and if you haven't read the Bible, the kingdom comes, kingdom, the, the city, the New Jerusalem is going to be like 
floating on top of a mountain or it's going to sit on top of a mountain. Something is coming out of the Shemayim. The city's coming down. That's where Messiah Yahushua was going to reign from, right? Somewhere, and what I said was that I believe at some point we will bring back a, a sacrificial system, something, right? Whether it's burnt offerings, whether it's fruit, sweet fragrances, maybe there's something. I guess the question is, would you, what, is it wrong to offer sweet incense up to Yah? If a new temple was ever was ever built, if we're not if we're not Levites, yes. But if we're given to Levites to do, I'm right. sure if, he'd be pleased with that. If the kingdom is to come, right? He and he puts us where we are supposed to be. And I'm not talking about a temple on earth, right? Because she gets real nasty here in this next little section, right? Um, because it's I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the kingdom that comes. So let's look into this right here. This is what she says. She goes, my brother, remember, she says Jesus, right? And there are no J's in Hebrew. So there's no such person as Jesus. There's a person named Yahushua, Yahshua, and it means salvation in Hebrew. Jesus does not mean salvation. So my brother, remember, Yahushua said his body is the temple. Sanctifications can only come through Messiah Yahushua. There is no temple that can claim cleansing or sanctification for anything. If you see such a thing or a temple claiming such, you must know it is the Antichrist. What you are saying is blasphemy to the highest level. Even the Jews have been trying to rebuild the temple but cannot get it right. There is no holy temple. And then she quotes 2 Thessalonians 2 uh, from verses 1 and 2. Concerning the coming of the Lord Messiah, Yahushua, Christ, Christos, and are being gathered to him, we ask you, brothers and sisters, not to become easily unsettled or alarmed by the teaching allegedly from us, whether by prophecy or by word of mouth or by letter, asserting that the day of the Lord has already come. Don't let anyone deceive you in any way, for the day will not come until the rebellion occurs and the man of lawlessness is revealed, the man doomed to destruction. He will oppose and will exalt himself over everything that is called God or is worshipped, so he, that he sets himself up in God's temple, proclaiming himself to be God. She's, and then she ends this, we are not under the Mosaic covenant unless you don't believe in the Messiah. Mm. Yeah, okay. Gentlemen, I'll let you have your first shot okay. at this. On the temple, well, let's just start with the temple, okay, when they said the Jews are still trying to rebuild the temple. That's false. That they're not well. They actually that, no. That's true. They, the Jews they're trying to build their temples, but they are the temple that we're talking about, where they rebuilt the uh, the Dome of the Rock or whatever it was. Yeah. So the Jews of today are not Yahuwah's people. Simply Google search abortion clinics in Israel, and they they're all over the place. They they're, line they're, they line the babies up. They kill them all. This is not what we are talking about. We are talking about in the kingdom to come. Okay. So let's. Anyone else have anything on the temple side? Um, yeah, the temples were destroyed several times over, and after uh, Yahushua died, like, what was it, 70, 80 or something? Yeah. And, and they had to rebuild it the third time, and that was, like, the third temple. Right, and, and the the so-called people of God of today, the, the so-called Jews that have poached the land, are over there, and they're trying to rebuild a temple, and they're, they're everybody will go, oh, well, the Antichrist is going to sit up in that temple and start making sacrifice. Look, the entire state of Israel is Antichrist. Right? They hate the Messiah Yahushua. In their evil Talmud, they say our Messiah Yahushua is burning in human feces. They are very, they're evil people by nature, but nobody knows this because it's anti-Semitic to say that, right? They have changed the ways that anyone can say anything at all. And if you if you let people know the truth, you're an anti-Semite, right? And and that's not that's not even real. I mean, <laughs> that would mean you're like an anti-Shem, right? You're you're not even the son of Shem or the you know. I don't even know what they're trying to say with this. Okay, let's attack this next part. Let's not attack it. Let's just discuss it. We are not under the Mosaic Covenant unless you don't believe in the Messiah. Well, okay, you you don't believe in the covenant because you are not of the Messiah, right? Like the Messiah specifically said. If you love me, keep my commands. And something that people will ask, what are the commands? What commands did he have? And she asked that here later. And it's keep, he says, love the you love Yahuwah with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and uh, love your neighbor as thyself. And you know, the Torah hangs on those. And that does not mean the Torah is thrown away. It means you are going to follow the Torah because if you love your neighbor, you're not going to go dump a tree on his house. You're not going to hurt him. You're not going to steal from him. You're not going to see him. If you love Yahuwah, you're not going to be eating pig. You're not going to be eating shrimp. You're not going to be cursing his name and cursing your parents if you love Yahuwah. And that's what he meant by saying that. Yeah. I mean, if you're eating pig, you're slapping your creator across the face and probably slashing another uh, 
whip on, on Messiah Yahushua's back. And that's exactly what Paul says. He says in the New Testament, he says, and when we sin, we are put ourselves, we are putting Yahushua back on the stake. We become the Pharisees that put him on the stake when we break the Torah. When we deny the Torah, we are as good as the Pharisees. But that's the thing about this channel is, is we have so many people come in. Our job is to get this message out to them. And this is what I told her. I said, we live, we are under the laws forever. Yah's ways are yasim. It is an honor to keep the laws of the Most High. I am not talking some earthly temple when I was, I was talking to her on the early thing. I'm talking about the kingdom to come. Not this world, but Messiah Yahushua, that those not keeping, Messiah Yahushua, those not keeping the laws of Yahuwah will be sent to hell. Please consider just reading what his laws are that you are rejecting. And much love, sis. And then Fearmonger, he decides to get in the uh, mix here. And he's, he's, you know, it, that's the thing about getting, talking to Christians, when we're talking about programming, there is nothing more cultish than a religion where you have all the answers, you have all of this stuff. But the problem is it's outside of the doctrines of our creator. So it's, it doesn't make any sense. So this is what she said, or this is what Fearmonger says. Also, it says a prophecy that we will give grain and wine offerings in the kingdom. Also in Acts, did, did Paul did a Nazarite vow after Christ died? And in that vow, you have to give an offering once the vow is complete, which he did. So she responds back. She goes, fear you must not. you must understand why Paul was doing so. A Nazarite vow was not a sin offering. It was a commitment they made to the Lord. It is something Jews did because Paul was trying to reach the Jews that did these things. Jade? It wasn't just the Jews. This was for all, any tribe. Any tribe that wanted to become a Nazarite could become a Nazarite. Yeah, and see, this is the brainwashing and the programming where people are like, oh, what, what about the Jews? And Well, what about the other 11 tribes? Right, that's another thing you got to remember is the, this Yisrael was not Jews. They were only, they only were the uh, tribe of Yahuwah, the Jews after they returned from the exile because the other 10 tribes didn't return. And right. becoming a Nazarite was like being like more holy, getting you yourself closer yourself. to Yah. You were sanctifying yourself to Yah. You were basically, you drank no wine, you ate no grapes, you basically kept anything away that was that, and you did not cut your hair. You basically just like were like a person of Yah, just like almost like a, like a monk to Yah almost. Yeah, and then she continues on. To the Jews, I became a Jew so that I might win Jews. To those who are under the law, as under the law, not being myself under the law, so that I might win those who are under the law. To the weak, I became weak, that I might win the weak. I have become all things to all men, so that I, by all means, save some. First Corinthians 9.20. This is where Peter comes in, right? Peter goes, uh, you know, um, you guys got to watch out. There's um, some things that Paul writes that if you're weak, you're going to get, you're going to yeah. get owned. You know, he's like, if you're not really strong, you're going to get owned. You got to be very careful about the writings of Paul. Paul was like, almost like a, like a poetic with his writing. He was very like, almost like. Here's the thing about Paul that nobody gets and nobody ever wants to talk about, right? There are all these books that are written. I read a book a long time ago and it was historical facts and about people that had read all of Paul's writings in Greek and whatever Hebrew that he had read, they, they, the scholars had gone over them and they only believe that half of them are even by the same guy, right? Most of the writings of Paul's do not appear by their writings to be the same guy. And they're looking at it in the original text and anybody who writes anything, like I, nobody could write to my wife and it would not sound like me. Right, it, you, she would. It would take her five seconds. How I write, how I type, how I speak, what I say, all of that. Right, you can't just switch up. It is almost like it's when people are trying to forge people's names and forge people's identities. It's really hard to do that unless you really can become that person. So, then her last thing right here says, she says, Jesus said we must follow His way. Which way are you following? Could you tell me what are the laws of Jesus? The laws of well, that's Yahushua. Actually what we're doing right now that you speak of it, we're actually going over what the laws of Yahushua were. These, yeah. These are the laws. These are the commands. His laws are his father's laws because he follows his father. Have yeah. no sexual relations with your relatives. Have, don't eat the pork. Don't eat the blood. Well, those are on the cross. You can you can look at your nephew and niece naked, right? Uh, no. Technically. Do not lie. Right? Do not lie. Do well, not. those laws are on the cross, but no. they keep the moral laws, right? That, 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 That's the Christian, still part of the Torah. Well, the Christians will keep only the moral law. The right. rest of it does not apply to them because they are under a new covenant. That doesn't make any sense to throw away only what you think is suitable for you. Even though you, the most of them don't keep the Shabbat, um, it's you, you're taking away what you want and picking and choosing. And it's your own religion. 
right? You become you become your own God. If you follow Paul, Brother Shaul, and, and you write some out of context verse that you don't know what it means, and you're like, well, this guy right here says, you know, a man tells me I don't need to keep the laws and you don't keep them, that becomes your God. And that infuriates the Christians like nothing else. So anyway, that's it. I quoted her a bunch of scriptures and, um, you know, brother and I write no new commandment unto you. Um, I, and then at the very end, I quoted Matthew 7, my favorite my favorite thing. That's not everyone that says unto me, Adonai, Adonai shall enter into the kingdom, but he that does the will of my father, which is in heaven. So anyway. And if you refresh that, fear monger just sent in another one. Of the bonus. Fear monger just sent another one? Peter. Okay, so Fearmonger's on this as we're doing it. There you go. Um, so Fearmonger wrote in right on time there, buddy. Uh, he was doing the vow because people were confusing his message and thinking he was speaking against the law. See 2 Peter 3, 14 through 17. That passage is for you. Note the word lawless in verse 17. So to prove to them that was a ridiculous notion, he did the vow. Revelation 14, 12. Yeah, in Revelation 14, 12, one of my favorite chapters, and it's it's the saints. You know, um, he here is the those who keep the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator and the faith in Messiah, Yahushua. And you can see people back in the day as well, they were confused thinking that he was saying there's no Torah, just like the people of today, what he wasn't. Yeah, well, Paul is, yeah, Paul was a, Paul was a Pharisee, right? He grew up in a Pharisaical world. His, his life was the Talmud. Right, it was the twenty-five book Talmud that they took out of Babylon that is full of great evil. That was what he was enforcing before Messiah Yahushua, and then he he hang he I don't he never hang. You know that's a funny thing, right? Brother Shaul, he was beating up the so-called Christians about the time when Messiah Yahushua was around. So I always found that very interesting that if he was really who was supposed to be following Messiah Yahushua. Why didn't he go when Messiah Yahushua was still around? Why didn't he become one of his disciples? Why was it later on that they figured this out? And I'm not saying he's, he's wrong or he's right, but um, it is interesting to note. All right, with that, let's get into the lesson today. Thank you guys very much for this. Um, thank you, Fearmonger. I appreciate your help on this. And um, let's get into our handy dandy split screen. We're there, and then we will break into our sefer. And we are into Leviticus... How you guys doing out there? My handy dandy split screen just like let me down. That's the first time it like let me down. Hmm. All right, let's do it. All right, there it is. And now suffer. I think I might have actually let down myself. All right. Handy dandy split screen. Feeling some handy dandy. No, handy dandy. Let me down. Let's roll Leviticus 22. All right. There are a few sub commandments in this, or like places that we just need to reiterate scripture. So no titles in this for the NIV. Let's begin. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe, saying, Speak unto El Eron and his sons, that they separate themselves from the holy things of the children of Yashrael, and that they profane not my holy name in those things which they hollow unto me. I am Yahuwah. Say unto them, Whosoever he be of all your seed among your generations that goes into the holy things which the children of Yashrael hollow unto Yahuwah, Having his uncleanness upon him, that soul shall be cut off for my presence. I am Yahuwah. Okay, so again, this is all about what? Cleanness. Yeah, cleanness. Uh, Don't, this is like keeping yourself sanitary. Keeping yourself sanitary and keeping yourself so you're able to do the work of Yah. Right, and if you are unclean, don't come before Yahuwah when you are unclean. Yeah, absolutely, right. What man soever of the seed of Aaron is a leper or has a running issue... He shall not eat of the holy things until he be clean. And whoso touches anything that is unclean by the dead or a man whose seed goes from him. Okay, um, what does that say at the very top of you guys? Uh, running issue? Uh, discharge. Discharge, bodily discharge. Okay, yeah, so we've talked about those before in depth. And so anything that goes there or you touch it, you're unclean. Okay, or whosoever touches any creeping thing whereby he may be made unclean or a man of whom he may take uncleanness whatsoever uncleanness he has all right so so if he touches any crawling thing so anything that's like uh what would be a crawling creepy thing that he would make him unclean um like the dead uh, bugs and dead insects well it wouldn't be creepy well i guess it wouldn't be creeping then well i guess the lizards and stuff right yeah i guess don't touch the dead i mean uh, is there a is there something that makes us unclean i don't think it's alive no if it's i think alive. if we eat it yeah that's still going to be considered dead at that point. All right. The soul which has touched any such shall be unclean, even 
unclean until even, and shall not eat of the holy things unless he washes flesh with water. And when the sun is down, he shall be clean, and shall afterward eat of the holy things, because it is his food. Now, this is a this part right here says, and when the sun is down. A lot of people don't know when the day begins. They're like, oh, well, the, the day is when the sun rises, and it's when the sun sets. And so it is when the sun sets, but that's the beginning of a new day. And um, pay attention to your life, please. And so we want to, um, it is important that we understand these things. Now, what was I saying with that, Eli? The sunset, sunset. I was talking to Eli here. He was the one that was, I love throwing you guys under the bus. You guys want to start yakking it up. Okay, okay, here we go. Um, so anyway, so the sun going down means, and he's cling, right? That day is over, is, is the point I'm trying to give with that. All right, eight. That which dies of itself or is torn with beasts, he shall not def eat to defile himself therewith. I am Yahuwah. So again, this is for priests, but we've, we've talked about this and we're not supposed to eat stuff of the, of this torn of the beast. But if we absolutely have to, then what? Then we're unclean. We're unclean until... Even. Even. And so goes the next, down. The next day. Right. I still, you probably still shouldn't eat things that are dead uh, because they cut parasites or diseases Yeah, absolutely. Or Make sure you fry that thing up really, really good. Yeah. Even then. Even then, yeah. They shall therefore guard my ordinance, lest they bear sin for it and die thereof. If they profane it, I, Yahuwah, do sanctify them. Okay? There shall no stranger eat of the holy thing. A sojourner of the priest or a hired servant shall not eat of the holy thing. Okay, what holy thing are we talking about? I think we're talking about the bread, the, the show bread, bread, and, and their, their, their sacrificed food, eat. other food that they cook and eat. Right. But if the priest buy any soul with his money, he shall eat of it. And he that is born of in his house, they shall eat of his meat. Okay. okay. Mine says a bean, not a soul. I don't think you buy a soul, but maybe like a slave or something so like that. So I guess you buy yeah. a soul. Yeah, I mean, it says slave. Yeah, buy a slave. That's crazy. Yeah, so, so you can't, so it's not a, a hired, like an employee, but some, a slave. Sounds like so. the devil if you buy a soul. Yeah, no, mine says if you buy a that bean. That is a crazy so. translation. Yeah. All right. So yeah, if you if you have a slave, you know, even if you're a slave, you still he, have or a soul. Or if like one of your. he gets to eat of the Kadesh offerings. Or right. if like one of your sla slaves give birth to one, a child then they can eat up as well. Right. Here we go. And if the priest's daughter also be married unto a stranger, she may not eat of an offering of the holy things. So that means that the priest had a baby, a girl, and she went off, got married, and she came back for whatever it was. She is not to eat of yeah, the holy can. things, which is interesting, right? Mm. Um, and married unto a stranger. That is interesting. It, it, that's what well, it's a stranger. What did you guys say? I think stranger was outside of the Levitical system, I think is what that meant. Outside of I think outside Levitical, of the tribes. Yeah, I, I would exactly. say outside yeah, tribes. Uh, and I'd be said other than a priest. Uh, if a priest's daughter marries anyone other than a priest. So yeah. So I guess because, uh, is that Levi? Yeah, it because is Because the way this works is uh, the priests were to be taken care of by the people. The priests were supposed to eat of the food the people brought. And if she married to someone else other than a priest, someone, oh, there, someone, else, eating. Can, yeah. someone else is going to be taking care of her. She's already taken care oh, of. Oh, that's a really good. Yeah, Yah's ways are like... Perfect. That's really smart. Yah's ways are good. All right. But if the priest's daughter be a widow or divorced and have no child and is returned unto her father's house as in her youth, she shall eat of her father's meat, but there shall be, but there shall no stranger eat thereof. Yeah, so they have there to be taken care of. But if they're married to someone else outside the priesthood, they are, they're already taken care of. They should already be, or the husband should be providing for But if you have them. a child, that ruins everything. Yeah, because he, ruins it, but he, I guess. Then should that child at some point can provide for... I mean, I don't no, know. No, widows and fatherless were already supposed to be taken care of anyways. Right. So they already had a plan for all that. All right, 14. And if a man eat of the holy thing unwittingly, then he shall put the fifth part thereof unto it and shall give it unto the priest with the holy thing. How, how do you I, eat the Kadesh offering by mistake? It says if you eat the Kadesh offering by mistake. I don't know. David ate the Kadesh offering. He ate the showbread, yeah. But um, he was almost on death's door. That wasn't quite the, I don't think it was quite a mistake. That was quite of a, hey, you got some food. And the priest was like, here's some food, bro. Yeah, and so that was a, that was a one-off. That was something because David was not, what tribe was David from? Judah. 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 And, and Yahusha made that as an example as well. Like when he was hungry, he went out and ate. So right. it was obviously... Y'all care. Y'all cares about us, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, he, he, you're starving. You're on the run. Everybody and their dog is trying to kill you, and you, you know, you, you, <laughs> you have no food. Y'all, y'all still going to take care of you. So it's important. All right, fifteen. And they shall not profane the holy things of the children of Yashrael, which they offer unto Yahuwah, or suffer them to bear the iniquity of trespass when they eat their holy things. For I, Yahuwah, do sanctify them. And Yahuwah spoke unto El Moshe, saying. 
Speak unto El Aaron and his sons, and unto all the children of Yashrael, and say unto them, Whatsoever he be of the house of Yashrael, or of the strangers of Yashrael, that will offer his oblation for all his vows, and for all his free will offerings, which they will offer unto Yahuwah for an ascending smoke offering. So what, is it, what did I just say there? So mine says for a voluntary offering. So when a man brings a voluntary offering, they're going to put it as a as a burnt offering to Yahuwah. Basically, the voluntary offerings, and that was like a kind of like a gift to Yah. That was just, here's a gift. Here's what I wanted to give you. Here's this goat. Here's this here's this uh, cow or whatever it was that he was sacrificed. And that's where we go back to where we're talking. Uh, there will be no death in the Shamayim. There will be no killing. But we will probably be giving gifts to Yahuwah, I would assume. I Yeah, and I, I would say, you know, whenever... I don't think Yah is going to come down with us. I think Yahushua is with us. I, wherever Yah is, Yah is doing his stuff. But... I mean, I see no problem with offering a, a smoke offering up. And I know everyone out there, oh, Jesus, bless me. That's Antichrist. Um, I, you know, I don't see why we don't want to, um, you know, make Yah happy. Even, even I mean, he create, gave us life. He gave us everything. And we owe, we owe everything we have to him. All right. You shall offer at your own will a, will a male without blemish of the cattle, of the sheep, or of the goats. But whatsoever has a blemish that ye shall not offer... For it shall not be acceptable for you. And whosoever offers a sacrifice of peace offerings unto Yahuwah to accomplish his vow or a free will offering in cattle or sheep, it shall be perfect to be accepted. There shall be no blemish therein. Blind or broken or maimed or having a runny sore or scurvy or scabbed, ye shall not offer these unto Yahuwah, nor make an offering by fire of them unto the altar uh, un upon the altar unto Yahuwah. Okay, mine says those blind or broken or having an a cut or have an ulcer, or eczema, or scabs, you do not bring to Yahuwah. On the so, running sword, the king says a when. A what? When. Oh, or having a win. W-E-N. I don't know what that is. Um, um, that's just... That's the king. <laughs> that's the king. So that would basically say, like, uh, Leia right now would not be a good sacrifice, right? Because she has, like, this eczema thing over her eye. Mm -hmm. One of our cows has this, like, funky thing over her eye. Um, and also, uh, like, a fly with... A fly larva on there. Mm -hmm. That would or be cut because I mean they they're always trying to push through barbed wire. They always end yeah, up they're always small cut up and so. Thing. All right, so. they got they got to be perfect. So either a bullock or a lamb that has anything superfluous or lacking in parts that may you that may you offer for a free will offering, but for a vow it shall not be accepted. You struggling there, Shug? Yeah, just trying to see what the footnote was. No. Okay, so we got that. Okay, and so what is uh, what's superfluous in your guys's? I think deformed, that's like the first one, right? And as for the bull or lamb that has any limb deformed or dwarfed, you do prepare as a voluntary offering, but for a vow it is not accepted. All right, so superfluous. So you can bring one that has like a, a, like a shorter limb or a, like a really like short cow or like one that's like dwarf that's really small. Yeah, my uh, NIV says stunted. Stunted. You may have represented a free will offering a sheep as deformed or stunted. Oh, okay. What was a normal size cow back then? It was like, because I mean, Probably they come same sizes to. Okay. Because they all come in different sizes. Yes, they things, do. So. I don't know. All right, 24. Ye shall not offer unto Yahuwah that which is bruised or crushed or broken or cut, neither shall ye make any offering thereof in your land. Thereof in your land. Neither from a stranger's hand shall ye offer the bread of your Elohim of any of these, because their corruption is in them and blemishes be in them. They shall not be accepted for you. And Yahuwah has spoken to Moshe, saying, When a bullock or a sheep or a goat is brought forth, and it shall be seven days under the dam. The mother. Okay, so that's under the damsel or something? I don't know. Under the dam. And from the eighth day and thenceforth, it shall be accepted for an offering made by fire unto Yahuwah. And does it say dam? And it does in the king as well. Yep. That's D-A-M. So it's not it the other like one. Dame. Does, it, does yours say Dame. So this is a cow, a female cow called a dame? I don't know. I don't know. All right, 28. And whether it be cow or you, you shall not kill it and her young both in one day. And when ye will offer a sacrifice of thanksgiving unto Yahuwah, offer it at your own free will. On the same day shall it be eaten up. Ye shall leave none of it until tomorrow. I am Yahuwah. So in the 31 here, it needs to go into commands. Therefore shall ye guard my commandments and do them. I am Yahuwah. That's not the first time we've heard this. When he repeats something, he really means it. It's like when a, when a father repeats it, make sure you do this, make sure, make sure, you remember this, make sure. And he keeps repeating it over and over. I mean, that's all Yahuwah obviously wants us to keep his commands. So for him to just send Yahusha and just say, okay, well, uh, 
Okay, that's it. Uh, don't remember anymore. I guess that was it. Yeah, and let's make sure that we keep Yaz commands better than you guys keep my house, Torah. <laughs> I knew we were going to uh, go. Heads went down. I knew we were going to go. Heads something. went down. Oh, man. Yeah, this is exactly right. I hope that all of us are far more obedient to Yah than uh, youth are to their parents. And I, I don't know if youth understand the um, importance of... Of, uh, of keeping the house Torah, which is not Yah's Torah. It's just our laws that we have here in our house. All right, 32. Neither shall ye profane my holy name, but I will be hallowed among the children of Yashrael. I am Yahuwah, which hallow you, that brought you out of the land of Mitzrayim to be your Elohim. I am Yahuwah. All right, gentlemen, anything else? Anyone got anything wrapping up? Um... For those that uh, think that the Torah and the commands are done away with, uh, uh, read your Bible. Start in Genesis one and just start from there. That's the best place to begin. But you got to read it as a as a love letter. If you read it as a love letter, instruction guide, technical manual, you'll be far better off than reading it as the old laws of the old. Or just you got to really uh, break out of that mindset of uh, the old New Testament is the only thing that matters anymore. Yeah, that's programming. That's programming by Hasatan. Satan is the one that has you tossing out half of your Bible when the first half is as great or if not greater than the second half. If, it, if we had kept the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator, then we would not have had to impale our um, Messiah on a tree and he was, he was beaten and he was just owned and that wouldn't have had to be. So um, it's very important that we don't keep falling into sin because it just, it makes the sacrifice of our Messiah um, lesser and lesser. And, you know, that's not going to be. Matthew 7 says that those who think that they are going to make the Shemaim, they're going to be told to go to hell, literally. Um, you who work iniquity, uh, you depart from me. And when you say depart from me, there's no other place to go. You know, you're not going to the second mansion up in the, the Shemaim, you're going to hell. And so this is why it's important. And this is why Yah sends all these people to us all the time. And we got to be patient. We just got to give them scriptures. But at a certain level, I don't even argue with anyone anymore. I, when they start getting back and belligerent, ah, oh, Jason, you're a heretic. I'm like, okay, well, the message has been sent. My job is done. I will love you to the end. And you guys can be as angry with me and yell at me all you want. Um, I am only a messenger. All right. And I wish I was a real messenger, but I'm just the uh, word messenger for right now. So, all human. All right. All right. Anything else? Read your Bibles and shalom. shalom. All right. Shalom. Shalom. Goodbye, everyone.